Here's the project assignment document from module eight in the course shell. And uh, let's look at the requirement. So um, review the material from module seven on databases, um, clone IMDB browser GitHub repository, and then the lecture videos to make sure you understand what the code is actually doing. Um, so if you've just gone through all the videos, um, then you should be in good shape there. Um, we're going to write a program that's just like the IMDB browser, except that it's fetching data from a names database instead of the Internet Movie Database. So this names data comes from the U.S. Census Bureau, and it records um, how many male and female babies were given a particular name um, each year from 1914 up through um, whenever I grabbed um, the copy for, um, for the database server. So I think 2014, give or take. So you should have about 100 years of um, census data um, about each name. And uh, it includes, um, for a given name, for example, Mark, M-A-R-C, how many babies were given that name Mark um, that were male, and how many um, female babies were also given that name, and also the total number of male babies in that year, and the total number of female babies in that year. So in the IMDB browser, um, we were searching for popular shows with a given genre, type, and minimum number of votes. Um, here you're going to be searching for um, all of the records for a particular name and gender. So for example, all of the male babies who were named MARC on a year-by-year -year basis, um, how many babies there were um, with that given name. So one thing about the census data, um, in order to keep the size down, um, they've only included names where five babies or more, um, five male babies or five female babies, um, um, had that particular name given. Um, so you may not find a particularly uncommon or unpopular name in a particular year. Now, the best way to select um, between a small number of choices like male or female um, is probably to use something like a radio button. And so I'm going to show you how to use a radio button because I didn't cover that in the IMDB browser. Um, and then I'm also assuming you don't necessarily know how to write SQL queries. So I've gone ahead and given you an example query to start with. So here is a query that retrieves name, year, gender, name count, and total from um, all data in the names database. So this is a view in the names database um, for the name M-A-R-C, where the gender is male, and then it's ordered by year in ascending order by default. Um, and so the results that you get out of the database in SQL Server Management Studio when you run this query um, look something like that. So you have the name, year, gender, it's going to be male because that's what I'm searching for, and then the name count and then the total number of male babies in that year. So if you divided 13 by 848603, that would give you the percentage of babies. I'd multiply by 100, that would give you the percentage of babies named MARC that were male in 1915, and so on. Um, so pretty straightforward. Um, you're going to want to parameterize this query. So this thing here is going to be a parameter, just like in the IMDB where you were using a parameter to bind the genre. You got the genre out of a combo box, and then you passed it um, ultimately down to the database method that did the retrieval. And then you had a SQL query with a question mark for parameter here, and you passed in the genre when you executed that statement. You're going to have a parameter for the name, that's going to come out of an entry, a box that, that you type into. And you're going to have a parameter for the gender, which is going to come out of the radio button. Um, and that will give you a set of rows that look like this. Um, and then you're going to display those in the table. So let's go ahead and uh, implement a really simple example with 
a radio button. And um, in my repos, actually, I'm going to make a new project for this. So here's my browser demo. I'm going to make a new, actually, sorry, make a new project. And I'll call this uh, radio. And then I'm going to go ahead and change to Python 3.8 interpreter and create. And I'll open it in a new window. And then I'm going to use PyGubu to create a really simple interface here. So let's go ahead and create a new. So I'm going to have a top level frame. And we'll call that top level. And then that's going to be a grid. And it's going to use all of the space. And I'll go ahead and put a weight on the row and the column. And then I'll also put padding. And then I want to add two radio buttons. So first one I add, and then I change that to be grid. And then add the second one. That's also grid. Um, and uh, probably I want to style these side by side so that they don't take up as much space. So let's go ahead and make the second one be row 0, column 1. And then I want to get some more space in here. So on radio button 2, I'm going to add some pad X. So let's go ahead and add 10 points of padding around that. Um, and then to change the labels, I go ahead and change the text. So let's say this is male. And this is female. And then let's actually put another label in here. And we're going to say that's gender, colon. And then I actually want this to be in front of there. So um, let me go ahead and this is going to be row 1, column 0. And then this is going to be row, sorry, this should be row 0, column 0. And then this should be row 0, column 1. And this should be row 0, column 2. OK, so let's uh, go with that. Um, and then I'm also going to add another label. And this one I'm going to go ahead and center. And then this one is in row 1, column 0. So it's centered with respect to gender. But I want to span all those columns. So let's span three columns. And now it's centered with respect to the full thing above. OK, so this thing is going to be an output. So let's go ahead and get rid of the text there. And give it an ID, gender label. And then the way that you tell that a radio button is selected, um, the value is going to be attached to um, a string variable. So one thing to be careful about here is the radio button actually has two variables attached to it. So this text variable here, that controls the text that gets displayed. But there's also a variable here and this is the value associated with this set of radio buttons. So if I have two radio buttons and they both have the same variable, that's going to make them exclusive. So it's either this one or this one if they have the same variable here. And then I can figure out what value it is, this value, by looking at the value of that variable. This variable is just going to affect the label here. So you don't want to mess with that one. 
So I'm going to go ahead and make a gender variable of type string. The value for the male is going to be M. And then the value for the female is going to be F, same variable. And that should be it. So let's go ahead and preview this. OK. And then I'm going to save it. And this one's going in my, oh, where did I put that? I put it in PyCharm projects. So mark PyCharm projects radio, radio.ui. And then I'm going to go to code and I'm going to generate the application code. And then right click, make a new Python file, radio.py, paste my code in. And then same thing as before. So import tkinter as tk, import tkinter.ttk as ttk. And then this has got to take a parent and add that here. So now I should be able to run it. Let me go ahead and run. Okay, so here's my interface. So I need a, an event handler for when a radio button is selected. So let's look that up. Actually, there's a command for this. OK, so I don't need to bind an event. There is actually a command for that. So in pygubu, let's look at the radio button. And the command is going to be um, radio select. And I'm going to use the same function over here as well. So that's radio select. Make sure I have it set for both. OK, so that's looking good. Save it again. Now I need a radio select method. And I can just use get on my variable. So self dot gender is equal to holder dot get variable and then the name was gender and then here print self dot gender dot get should work. OK, so click and, and M showed up. F, and you see I can only have one of these selected at a time. And whichever one I click on, it goes ahead and shows it in the box. And just to finish this up, um, let's go ahead and self.gender label is builder dot get variable get object uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. gender label parent and then to change the value of the label I need to have a variable so this label here 
I want to attach a text variable to it. So we'll call that gender label variable. And then when I click on it, I'm going to set self.genderLabelVariable.set to the string gender colon plus, and then self.gender.get. So get variable. does not take parent. There. OK. So good. So I click, and it shows gender M, gender F. So that should be everything you need to add radio buttons for gender to your project. And you also have the SQL query you need, um, as well as some simple results.